Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Getting Started with Email Marketing, Foolproof Tools and Tips to Create Email Campaigns that Convert. Uh, my name is Laura. I am using my webinar uh, platform or her account. So apologies for the confusion there, but this is indeed uh, Lori on the line with you. Unfortunately, Lisa can't join us today. So welcome to everybody. I know there's a number of people still jumping on the call, but I, I do want to honor your time and uh, get started promptly. I have 12 noon on the call. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Thanks for making the time for your business to, uh, to join me for the webinar. So uh, I don't think that I've ever done a webinar on uh, Valentine's Day today, but I think, you know, I figure, hey, everybody else is working, so it's not really a holiday. We'll take care of Valentine's stuff later personally, but for now we're going to put some loving on our business. So uh, let's get started. Just a little bit about uh, me before we begin. This is me uh, on one of my better days, probably. <laughs> Lori Nechtel, uh, I work a lot with uh, small businesses on um, solidifying their brand and um, then helping them to uh, communicate their brand by choosing the right marketing channels for their business and helping them execute on those strategies through uh, website design, through email marketing, and through uh, appropriate use of social media. I'm also a, an authorized local expert with Constant Contact, so uh, that is the hat I have on today. Actually, I have both hats on because um, I've been using Constant Contact for my business uh, for the last, well, I've been in business for, for almost 10 years now, and I actually used it corporately before I, I started with that. So um, this is um, nothing new for me, the Constant Contact. I've used other email platforms. I always come back to Constant Contact, and I'll get into a little bit about why uh, before we move on. First of all, I should check with you to make sure uh, that the audio is good. So if you can hear me OK, can you please just uh, use a little hand raise thing or, or put a little comment in just to, uh, just to let me know that you can hear me OK? For those of you who are on the call today, Great, thank you everybody. Just gonna put the hands down. And I also wanna make sure you can see the screen okay. So um, uh, you should see a welcome uh, screen right now with uh, my picture on it and, and contact details. So if you, if you can uh, raise that little hand again, that's awesome. Thank you so much everybody, I really appreciate it. Wanna make sure that uh, you can see and hear everything okay before we get underway. So. Uh, without further ado, let's move on here. So the first thing that I want to talk about uh, is a little bit about, you know, conceptually or theoretically, why email? And the fact of the matter is that email is, um, I think a lot of people feel like it's kind of the unsexy cousin of, of social media, at least that's what I, how I like to position it. But the fact of the matter is that um, it's still the preferred method of communication for the bulk of individuals out there. So when you're thinking about your clients and how they prefer to be communicated to, uh, the top answer is still email. And when I do presentations live, I ask people, you know, when you woke up this morning, how many people um, checked your email before you got out of bed? And and the sad truth, I guess, is that most, if not all of us, do, including myself. So. Um, so that is, you know, that speaks to the reliability of, of email and the fact that it's a preferred channel. In fact, when social media platforms want to let you know that you have a new follower, or somebody mentioned you, or what have you, uh, they don't, you know, Twitter doesn't tweet you about that, they send you an email. So even social media channels are using email to communicate with you because they know it's the most reliable channel to get the message through to you. So, uh, and, and um, also, um, conversion rate is way higher with email, and also the, the ROI of email is about 41 to 42 cents for every, or sorry, 41 to 42 dollars for every dollar spent uh, compared to any other marketing platform out there. 
you're getting the, the highest return on, it, on your investment. So that's a little bit about why email marketing. Um, now, why constant contact? So uh, some of you on the line are constant contact users, so uh, you maybe have that, that um, answered for you already. Uh, but for me, uh, there are, are a few key reasons why I continue to use constant contact, even though I've tried to use a number of other platforms. And uh, here they are. So uh, the, the, the mobile, the templates are all mobile responsive by default and pre-designed for you so you have a nice looking email right off the hop. Now, uh, I'll take that one step further for anybody who's not current, currently using constant contact. Um, they have an offer that they make available through authorized local experts like myself where if you sign up for Constant Contact, they will actually match your website and create a professionally designed uh, e email template for you to use. So all you got to do is plug your content in and go. Uh, and, and I provide that service to my clients. And when I, when I do that, um, you know, regardless of what platform they're using, I charge four to $500 for that service. So I, I like that. I'll give you more details about that at the end if you're interested. Um, but in addition to that, there's, there's a lot of different list growth tools available to you um, and and something I'm going to be sending you first of all I, I am recording this webinar I will be sending you a recording of the webinar afterwards so uh, you don't have to feverishly take notes all the way through but please feel free to take notes as you desire just know you'll be getting a recording of this in addition I'm going to send you um, a, a little ebook that I put together called 50 ways to grow your list and so it gives every business in any industry of any size um, ideas about how you can build your list both online and offline in person. Uh, so watch for that. But Constant Contact has a lot of ways. There's, there's a lot of um, different tools within Constant Contact that you can leverage to build your list. Also with detailed reports, this is important. If you're not measuring, you're not marketing. So if you're just sending emails out there and not looking at who's opening them and what and what kind of content they're finding engaging, then you're not getting the full use out of uh, the platform or any platform that you'd be using. And um, you're not really marketing. You're just kind of throwing stuff out there and hoping it sticks. Um, and finally, and probably my most favorite part, for those people who already use Constant Contact, you'll know this to be true. Their support is fantastic. A lot of people ask me, why not use a free email marketing platform? Um, the bottom line is there's no support there. When you have a question, and you will, it's not an if, but it's a when. Um, I, I mean, I'm still using uh, Constant Contact support quite frequently and I'm 12 years into using the product. So, you know, there's always new stuff to use and, and questions that we have. Um, so I like to speak to the, answer, uh, the experts about that. But, um, you know, you need that support and it's nice to have support through different channels. So there's online knowledge, uh, online knowledge libraries. There's user forums so you can talk to other people that are using the product. There's online chat. You can get them through social media, phone, etc., cetera, uh, and through email. So love the support. There. Those are the reasons that I use this platform. Um, marketing for today. So I want to talk a little bit about where email fits in your overall online marketing picture. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I would guess that most, if not all of you, would have a website. Um, I'm a, a website designer, so I, I position your website as that soft place to land at the end of your search. So, you know, if somebody, and, and, and think about this from your perspective as somebody who looks for a product or service online or a business. Um, it's nice to find them on social media, uh, what have you, to find they have a, maybe a Google business page, but ultimately you want to end up at a website because it's that comprehensive, it's like their online brochure, it gives you their hours and contact information, it tells you about them, their product services, gives you lots of nice pictures, and you might be able to even have that e-commerce uh, experience online for those who sell online. So it's nice to have a website, but that relies on people finding you. So that's inbound marketing. Um, social media is two-way engagement. It's very conversational. And in fact, the rules around social media uh, in, are used for small businesses. is changing rapidly. Um, and uh, the latest I've heard from those 
uh, in the know that are heavily embroiled in the in the social media industry and and are constantly studying and and reporting on on the updates. Um, really we're moving almost uh, fully to a pay-to-play situation with social media. So uh, currently businesses are using it for customer service and two-way engagement. Um, but as far as using it as a marketing platform, uh, you're going to have to pay to uh, place ads in a lot of the prevalent platforms today. Of course, Facebook is the one that comes to mind because we all have experience with Facebook and boosting posts and you know Facebook ads, et cetera. Um, so the possibilities there, uh, it's not prohibitively expensive. Um, you can pay, you know, as little as like seven bucks per post uh, to to boost a post, and uh, that can be uh, that can be quite effective. Um, but just so you know, uh, social media is moving in in that direction um, in its entirety, not just Facebook. Um, and then finally, there's email marketing. And uh, email marketing is outbound marketing. So this your list is gold. If you're not currently building a list, you must start. And by building a list, I mean not just uh, a list of contacts that you've either done business with and or you've met through networking, et cetera, but that you have their permission to um, send emails to them. So that is what's called a, what's a, a castle compliant or, or a can spam in the United States. Uh, compliant uh, list. It's all about getting permission, and that's not hard to do. And that um, that 50 ways to grow your list document that I'll send you uh, includes a lot of ideas around uh, how to get permission to send people. But the fact of the matter is, when you have people's permission, nobody can take that away. No change in algorithms on Facebook's part is going to change the way uh, and and the frequency that that people see your your uh, posts. So you have direct access to people, and that's why your list is so valuable. Now, the change that I'm seeing in how these pieces all play together is that the big marketers, the, the, and I don't mean big corporations, I mean I mean solopreneurs who are really kicking butt and taking names with with uh, marketing their businesses, are making email marketing um, the center of their marketing universe. And what they're doing is they're using social media platforms to drive traffic to their mailing list um, so that if they if they share a YouTube video, for example, at the end of every YouTube video, they will have a standard call to action that says, you know, do you like this, this piece of uh, content? Uh, to ensure that you receive all of my videos going forward, please visit such and such a, a website and sign up for uh, my, or subscribe to my email list. So there's always that call to action that drives traffic to the mailing list, and then you've got them captive, um, you know, for the you know for the future. So you're not having to worry about falling prey to to a, a social media platform's algorithms. So here's what we're going to talk about today, uh, start to finish. We're going to see constant contacts email marketing dashboard in action. We're going to design a branded email. I'm going to show you some cool little tools and tips around that. We're using the brand new 3GE editor. So for those of you who aren't um, aren't uh, or are already sorry using Constant Contact, you might be using the the um, the two the second generation editor. I'll show you the difference between those in a second. But uh, do know that if if you're not currently using 3GE we can uh, put a request in the Constant Contact and get you upgraded uh, free of charge. So um, don't worry about that. Uh, and finally, I want to finish off. I'm, I'm actually setting aside a whole half hour after this guided demonstration is done to answer your questions. So whether you're new to email marketing, new to Constant Contact, or a, an existing Constant Contact user, whatever questions you might have, please feel free to stay on for as long as you like, and keep in mind I'll be recording it, so if you do have to jump off at right at 1 o'clock, I understand, and I'll follow up and, and send you the link to the, the, um, the webinar uh, recording so that you can listen back later at your convenience. So just a note here uh, about, the, so, so for those of you who use Constant Contact, this is what the, the 2G, the, the previous toolkit editor uh, dashboard looked like, and then this is what the new dashboard uh, looks like so um, you might uh, you know you might see uh, one or the other 
uh, currently in your own dashboard, but keep in mind they work very similarly. And like I said, Constant Contact is actually working to get everybody onto the 3G editor. And if you haven't um, gotten that yet and want to kind of um, uh, expedite that process, please uh, let me know and, and I'll help you get, uh, get that upgrade for your account. So we're going to switch over to the live uh, constant contact here and so, we th so that we can uh, give it a try. So I'm already logged in here. I'm just going to log out and, and back in again so that uh, we start from the very beginning. So when you go to constantcontact.com to log in, um, if you haven't yet logged in and you want to create a trial account, they're available to you, a 60-day free trial account. Uh, that you can use to kind of as your own little sandbox to play around and create emails, go to uh, www.marketingforreal.com. I'll show that again at the end for those of you who haven't, uh, who I didn't set a trial account up for yet. Um, and then uh, what that means is you'll have access to the free, uh, the opportunity to get the free uh, email template if you decide to proceed. So we're just going to go ahead and log in here from here. I'm going to log into my authorized local expert account. And we'll get started with uh, creating an email. Now, the way that I actually like to start is by updating my contact list. So I want to give you a little peek into that area first. Um, I like to have the contacts in place so that when I create my email, I can seamlessly go through and schedule my email so that if I needed to upload a new contacts list or, or add a couple new contacts to a list that I'm going to be using, um, that I can uh, seamlessly, uh, that I can already have that done and then seamlessly go ahead and schedule my email with the, uh, with the appropriate list. So this is the contacts area. This, uh, you know, some of uh, some constant contact customers use this as their their CRM or their their um, their customer relationship management tool. So uh, totally doable here. There's lots of opportunity when you add contacts to add in more than just name and email address. Um, as you'll see here, you can add in job type, title, company. You can add multiple email addresses, uh, etc. Um, you want to make sure that you say that you have permission to send to them because like I said, that's what the new uh, anti-spam legislation, regardless of whether you're in the US or Canada, that's what the new, uh, the, the latest anti-spam legislation is all about, is permission. So you want to make sure that you have people's permission to email them and, you, and then that is called express permission. So then from here you can add this new contact to any of the existing lists in your current list of lists. Or you can create a new list. I should say list a couple more times. So you can create a new list here. Just give it a separate name, press create, and then you can add a person to that list as well. You can, as you see over here, you can add additional um, additional uh, details. And over here, you can add tags. So you can actually add a note if you're adding an individual uh, contact. You can add a note about how you met or a product that they bought or when they visited the store or that they came in on a promotion. And that allows you to really keep track of who your contacts are and, and how they got added to your list. It's especially important um, if, if you meet somebody in person and you exchange cards and you tell them about their ma your mailing list and they say, yeah, please add me. This is a great way to keep track of, you know, met so-and-so on this date. Um, they asked to be added to the list. so. I've done that um, today. And then the other part of that is you might want to send them an email confirmation just saying, uh, hey, thanks for asking to join my list. I've added you, just confirming. So I want to go back here and just show you how you can upload. Uh, a lot of people ask about how they can upload an entire list of, of people from a database. So whether you keep an Excel spreadsheet or whether you've exported it from a different program like Outlook or, or a different CRM. Um, you can actually add contacts from an Excel spreadsheet just by selecting Upload from File. And you go in here and you just want to select Choose File. There's a little video here that shows you how to, how to go about uploading from File. You choose File and then you navigate on your computer to where the Excel spreadsheet exists 
and just upload it there. It'll allow you then to choose the column headers for each of the individual columns in your spreadsheet and you're off to the races and you've added all those people in bulk. Keep in mind also, please make a note that you can head over to marketplace.constantcontact.com and you can, Constant Contact has a lot of software integrations, so they integrate with QuickBooks, um, basically any um, type of software that where you might have a database on that platform. Uh, Constant Contact has a lot of integrations that allow you to pull contacts directly over from that software rather than having to export them and then import them into Constant Contact. So nice little tool there as well. So we're going to come back to this area because we're going to look at reporting um, afterwards and uh, we'll also take a quick look at list growth tools. But for now, let's get, uh, let's get started with creating a campaign. So this campaign sh dashboard is just showing me the, the campaigns. These are all kind of demo campaigns that I've created in the past. Um, and so we're going to create a fresh campaign. Now keep in mind, if you do have an existing template or if you decide to get started with Constant Contact and you get a, a template designed for you, all you'll have to do is go to your templates, uh, sorry, your campaigns area, find the campaign that's called um, a template, which I don't have one in here, but all you would do is find that template and you want to always copy it copy the original template, so create a copy, and it's actually going to create a copy of that template and take you right into the editor so you can start designing using your, your original um, professionally designed template. But for today's purposes, I want to show you uh, how to create one from one of Constant Contact's templates. They have a number of different options here. You can create a survey or poll. You can uh, create an event registration. Um, but today we're going to send an email, so we're going to create a new email campaign. And it's going to bring you to the list of uh, available templates for you to use. These are all nicely designed. They're all mobile friendly, so keep that in mind. That's, uh, that's handy dandy. And you'll see they always prioritize. They've got a few of the most popular templates up top, but they're going to prioritize their template listing depending on the time of year that it is. So we're on Valentine's Day, so they've got their Valentine's Day templates at the top. You'll see next comes uh, St. Patrick's Day, and then beyond that, Easter, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes all the way down to Christmas. And at Christmas time, you'll see Christmas, uh, Kwanzaa, um, Hanukkah, all of those kinds of uh, templates. So um, uh, you can choose one of these uh, pretty templates for an email that you're sending out. Uh, even if you have a template, you might want to uh, just send out an invitation, a quick little invitation, something like this, or a card or flyer, something promoting something, or something that has a coupon in it. And a number of these do have uh, coupons, as you'll see here. Um, and I'll show you. I show, I'll show you how to insert that. But we're just going to take this uh, basic email template here. A basic newsletter template because it'll have all of the features and functions in it that um, that we want to use. So the very first thing is that we're going to name our campaign. Now this campaign name is for your reference only. Um, so your uh, whoops, your customers, your your email recipients will not see this. This just shows up in your campaign, your list of email campaigns, so you can easily reference it and know. Uh, which one is which. So you, if you want to select it and edit it or copy it, you can easily do so. So this is your editor, and the, the new 3GE editor is, is drag and drop, which c creates a really simple, and, simple way to create a beautiful and effective email with all of the various components that we'd like to add. So the first thing that I like to do, um, first of all, this is your header information, and I usually leave it until the end. Um, your subject line, your pre-header, and the from address. I leave all of that until the end because I like to do that once I've put my campaign together. That'll give me a better idea of what my subject heading is going to be. Um, so the first thing that I like to do is go to design, the design tab in the left-hand side. And I like to set my colors. So uh, for those of you who aren't currently using a template or if you want to create a new template, um, like I said, for an invitation or what have you, that matches your website 
uh, how do you go about doing that? Not all of us are designers by trade, and so we don't necessarily know our color codes and what have you, um, but there's a really easy way to do that. And so I'm going to pull up the website of uh, a recent client of mine. I designed a, um, a, a website for them. and. Um, we're going to borrow some colors, and we're going to create an email campaign for this client um, that looks and feels like their website does. So the first thing is, how do we get these colors to match the colors? Uh, and I use a little tool called Colorzilla, which you'll see me hovering over the icon in the right top right corner here. So if I click on Colorzilla, it's going to give me a few options. I'll, I'll click the color picker. And then when I hover over something, whoops, sorry about that. Um, when I hover over anything on the website, you'll see at the top here, this little swatch is changing based on the color that I'm hovering over. So I can easily sample colors from here. So I'm going to take a kind of middle of the road light blue for the background. And I've clicked on it, so it's, co it's copied that to my, click my clipboard. Now, um, I'm just going to show you what it is copying. So it says copy to your clipboard here. It's going to allow you to copy any of these color codes, but the ones that we, went, we want are called the hex color codes, which means there's six alphanumeric um, elements to the code, uh, hence the hex uh, name. And we're going to copy just the hex code without that hash symbol in there. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to add this to our outer background. We're going to go to More Colors, and I'm going to copy that code in here. And you'll see now when I apply it, the background is that color. I can also change the pattern of the background. So if I wanted to add that snowflake pattern that's in the background here, um, I can either take one of their predefined patterns uh, actually, sorry, I can only take one of their predefined patterns, but there's one here that's very similar and it's very faint, but I, I don't mind that because then it's, uh, it's not super distracting, it's not terribly busy. Um, so we'll, we'll add that. Now we want to uh, change the color of the buttons and dividers, so uh, we're also going to borrow the pink from this uh, website here. And so again, with the color picker, we'll hover over um, the menu item here, and we'll choose this pink color here. So again, I, I only want, I don't want the hashtag uh, or the pound sign in there, the number sign. So I'm going to go back here over buttons and dividers, click here, more colors, and I'm going to add that color code in there. Okay. So the next thing we'll want to do is swap out this placeholder logo for their actual logo. And there's a few different ways that you can insert images into uh, your email uh, temp or your email template or your your email campaign. One is to drag and drop from your current email uh, your image library. So you'll see how that changes it up. Of course, this is not the image that we want to go with. So another way that you can add a logo, and I only recommend this um, doing this for a website that is your own, where you have control over the images there, because you don't want to be doing this from a uh, website where the image is going to be go away. But you can actually copy the address where that image exists on your server. So you're copying the URL, um, the, the address of that particular image, and then over on this side, can actually click on replace and in this uh, w little pop-up window that comes up you can paste in the URL that you just copied from your website and preview it and it's pulling in that that logo um, so you know that it's the right logo and there you have it the new logo your logo is in there. Again, you don't want to be pulling images from any website but your own, because if they were to change that website out and you didn't know, all of a sudden it would pull that image from your email template. So the other option there is to upload it directly to your image library. Um, and the way that you do that is to upload, click here, upload images, 
and it's just going to ask you to browse your computer to upload a new uh, image. And in fact, we want to upload a new image for this um, for this email. So I'm going to upload a couple product images here, just as you would in a lot of other, uh, you know, whether you're adding an image in a Word document or what have you. Um, same kind of uh, approach here, same strategy. So it shouldn't be terribly foreign. I'm just going to add these images here, and once they're added, then we can say we're done, and it will add them to the library here. So down in this area down here, if we want to replace one of these images, we simply can take this, drag it, and drop it into that spot, and there's our new image. Same with this one, drag and drop. And the nice thing about this drag and drop function is that not only can you drag and drop images into your email from over on the left hand panel, but you can actually move your stuff around so that um, you can stack things on top of each other or uh, again you can move it over to the side here again. Um, so it makes, it makes your design super simple. Uh, and helps you achieve the look that you're after without a lot of, you know, without any code and without a lot of frustration. So I really, um, I'm really loving this new 3G editor for how uh, simple it is to use. So uh, the button here, if we wanted to add a new call to action, so, you know, if they're announcing a, a new product here, we simply would um, put that in right here, new product announcement. And actually, uh, this was a new product that she launched in conjunction with um, a hockey, a big hockey event that was going on in, in our hometown here. Um, so yeah, you can update the, uh, this, all this information the same. You can either copy and paste it in from a, a Word document, uh, or you could type, <coughs> pardon me, you can type in right into the editor. Um, and then with your links, when you want to update a link, it's fairly straightforward as well. Um, you can add different types of links here. So the most common type of link is to your web page, but there are also links to email addresses. Um, so that will format your link properly, so you can add your email address down here. Um, and the other thing is to add document. And so you can actually choose a document from any that you've uploaded to your library, your document library. So you can insert um, a new document here and, uh, and put that right into your, your email. So social media down at the bottom as well, you want to make sure to fully integrate your social media with your email campaigns to get the most reach. One of the easiest ways you can do that is to ensure that you have your social media icons down at the bottom. And if you want to uh, add additional social media here, you just go over to the left-hand panel on the Build tab and add social. So this will add an entire bar for you. So whatever of these um, you're using, you can um, update each one of them individually and you just want to edit, so you click on, say, click on Pinterest, you're going to edit it, and actually it will bring them all up at the same time. That's the new editor, uh, my apologies. Um, so you can update all of these at the same time. Just grab your URL from, from each of these and plug it in here, and you're good to go. So, and then the ones that you don't want, you can simply, if, if you're not using Instagram, for example, uh, or Pinterest, you can just click on the little trash can icon there and get rid of it, and then you can insert that. Now, if you want that formatted, um, you should just be able to drag it up here, and then it's on the pink background for you. So the other option is that you can, um, and then, sorry, you can you can get rid of that, that one as well, so you can customize your own here. Uh, in your footer, if you want a footer here, just simply click in here, add all of your contact information and you're good to go. Keep in mind that as per uh, anti-spam legislation, your contact information will be 
uh, in the bottom of every email. Uh, Constant Contact does a lot of stuff by default to help you be compliant with anti-spam legislation so that you're not having to worry about all of that. All you want to worry about is making sure you have permission from people and making sure, like we're doing here, that your emails look good and you are off to the races. So, um, one more thing uh, here is editing this header. So I just want to show you, uh, you can change up the from email, so who it appears, or who it appears to be coming from. So I like to send my, pardon me, from my, uh, my business email address, but if you're sending an email, if you work for a small business or a, a company that has multiple people and you're promoting an event, um, your from email address, you might be the marketing department, but you want it to show up as coming from the event coordinator or you know a different department. So all you would do is um, upload their email address and get it verified, and then you can uh, use their email address uh, instead of your own. And by default, it's going to have the reply to email address. So when somebody hits the reply button from their email editor because they want to follow up with you in response to your email, by default, it's going to reply to this, the from email address. But if you'd prefer for them to reply to somebody else, again, in the case of you promoting an event where you're sending it out, but you want them to uh, reply to the event coordinator, you just uncheck this little box and choose a different email address here uh, for them to reply to it. Subject lines are critical. So once you've got your email together, in this case, we're promoting a couple new products that we're offering, and, and we do have an e-commerce function we're selling online. So, uh, you know, we want... We want to com uh, create a compelling uh, subject line. There are subject line tools for you to use as well. So if you Google subject line tool, uh, you know, click on one of those results, and put in the subject line that you're thinking of using, and it will actually assess your subject line and provide ways for you to be able to improve it so that you, inc you improve your overall open rate, which is a, a great tool uh, to use because subject lines are kind of like um, your uh, your interview in a in a job when you're when you're job hunting or sorry not an interview a, a, a resume um, you know these are determining a, a resume determines whether or not you get you get an interview not whether you get the job um, and your subject line determines in large part whether or not your email gets opened not necessarily whether it gets clicked on or they or they take that call to action that you want them to take um, but. Uh, we want a compelling subject line, and then we can also create what's called a pre-header. So in a lot of uh, email inboxes, we're going to see additional text under the subject line that gives us a little more information about what the, uh, what the email's about. So we could, we could allude here to the fact that we're offering uh, it at a, a discounted price for a limited time, or that the product's available for a limited time, or we could just name the products to really tempt people, people's taste buds um, to get them to open the email. So, and that's the ultimate goal with our subject and pre-header is to get them to open the email. Um, so once we've, once we've done all of that, we can save it as is. Now I will tell you that one of the, one of the new features with the Constant Contact um, uh, 3GE editor is the undo function. And what that undo function allows you to do is, is undo anything on your entire template that you've done. This is the first industry-wide, the first platform industry-wide that allows you uh, the undo function so that um, you can, just like you would in a Word document or what have you or in Excel, um, allows you to, to kind of step backwards through your process and, and undo some of the, the changes that you've made. Uh, so really great feature. I'll tell you, like I said, I've been using this for 12 years and I can't tell you how happy I was to see that function. And then of course if you undo something and you accidentally did that, you can also hit the read. So once you hit the save uh, button, um, you can preview it. Now I, I recommend always previewing your work 
uh, take a look how it's going to look. And the nice thing about this email preview option is that you can look, you can see how it's going to look from a desktop device. And let's not forget about how it's going to look on mobile because as of 2015, actually, late 2015, uh, mobile consumption of online content surpassed that of desktop consumption. But, so chances are really good at least 50% of your email readers are going to be viewing this from a mobile device, um, either a tablet or a smartphone. So you want to make sure it looks good on those as well. So this is your mobile responsive uh, email your layout, so it stacks the content for you, keeps things nice and clear, easy to access all of the various linked content on here, your call to action for visit our website. Um, so, and then you can also send a test email. So you can click on this, this is going to show you, a, um, bring up a little window and you can add up to five email addresses that you can send it to to test, um, to test your email to make sure that it shows up in the inbox the way that you want it to. So I'm just going to, if you if you click send a test, you'll just, it, it automatically sends to your inbox and you can go over and have a look at it. So we'll go back to our editor here and then when we're ready, we can continue on and get ready to schedule our um, emails to go out. So here you see the available email list that I have. Again, we've already created, we've already uploaded all the contacts that we want and the, de the demo list, so we're ready to go. I'm going to select this demo list here. Now keep in mind you can select multiple lists, and the nice thing is that it will vet those lists against one another so that if you have a contact who actually is on both of those lists, they won't receive the email twice, they'll only receive it once. So that's a nice feature too, which allows you to um, to, to um, rest assured that you're not double emailing people, which can get, I'm sure you would agree, would be a little annoying. So here's your subject line again. You can, you can edit it here at this point if you like. Your from name, how it's going to show up, you can change that. Keep in mind when, when, when people see the from name, um, think about how they're going to be expecting to hear from you. Are they going to be expecting your personal name or are they going to be expecting your, uh, your business name? And generally speaking, your from name is going to be one or the other, but think about how you're known online across your social media channels and use that accordingly in the from name area. Again, the from and reply to email addresses here. Your physical address will appear at the f in the very footer of your email. As I indicated, you can edit it here um, so it shows up differently if you need it to. Um, and then you can choose when to send. So um, there's, there's two options here. You can either send it right away or you can schedule it to send later. And if you choose that, you're going to get a little calendar um, pop-up here, and a little interactive calendar widget that allows you to, to choose the date that you want to send it on as well as the time that you want to send it on. And make sure to pay attention to the AM versus PM uh, option here you can get very specific about when you're sending your email campaigns. Now, when we go over to reporting, uh, you'll see that you can, you can actually see through the reporting dashboard when people are engaging with your content. So that will help you decide for future campaigns the best time of day and best day of the week to send your content based on the results that you're getting so far. So I'm going to actually send this out to my demo list. Send it right now. And so you're getting a confirmation here that it has been sent. Um, and um, once, once the email is sent, uh, I'll, I'm going to come back to this because one of, the, one of the things that you can do, or actually we can do it right now, when you scroll down on that confirmation page, it shows you the little thumbnail of your campaign and the details of your campaign. It also gives you an email link there so you can copy that and share it. But instead of doing that, this feature I love, this is, this is the other way that you can integrate with social media, which I think makes a promotion of your, your newsletter and it uh, really expands your reach. It makes both of those super, super easy. Um, come down here and it says share this campaign on social media. 
So in this portion of your um, dashboard, if you click on this, you're going to come to a page that allows you to share um, all of your campaigns across three different platforms. And those platforms are LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can share to a timeline on, on Facebook or a page. So um, here, are, are, I, currently I only have my, my LinkedIn account in here. If you're logged in all the time, um, then uh, logged into your various social media uh, channels, then, uh, then you can add them at any, any point. Um, and uh, so right now, just to demonstrate for, uh, for uh, LinkedIn, sorry, um, if I want to post this to LinkedIn, I can choose to post it right away. So this one current this box currently is for today, or I can remove this post if I want to kind of delay. Some people treat their mailing list as a VIP list. So if you want to send your email out today to your VIPs and then delay posting it to social media by a day, for example, um, then you can remove this post and add a new post. Oh, sorry, it's creating a schedule for me. So we'll we'll post this to just so I don't have to add this again. We'll post this to um, uh, today, but we'll post it later on today. So say 3 p.m. So we're going to change the time here. We're going to select 3 p.m. from the drop down here. Um, we're posting it on LinkedIn. So it's going to by default put our subject line in here, but we can um, we can customize this. add more information and then it's going to also by default add the link to our um, social media or sorry to the post when the post gets uh, included in our stream and in, in LinkedIn and so all of our LinkedIn con contacts are going to see that email like I said that does two things it helps you promote whatever it is that's in your email campaign uh, or share information but it also promotes the fact that you've got a mailing list and then people can click on your uh, your email to read the newsletter and also can subscribe directly to your, e your newsletter right from there. If you want to add an additional, say uh, if, you're, if you're scheduling an event um, and you want to send this, or, or if you've got a new promotion or a new, new program coming up that you want to promote over the next two weeks, you can add, um, in addition to today's post, you can add any other day, so maybe you post again on the 21st and again on the 28th, um, you post that to LinkedIn. So you can add another one down here. Oh, and by default, it's, it's going to pull uh, images in from your um, newsletter. So you can choose what those images are, or you can choose uh, default images that Constant Contact provides as well if you just want a general um, kind of newsletter um, image. So it's pulling images from my image library right now, and then it's going to go to some default images here that I can scroll through. I would encourage you to use your own images where possible because they're much more engaging than just a, a, a general ambiguous newsletter graphic is. So uh, keep that in mind. You might want to upload some additional images to your image library for this purpose. But this is the image that's going to show up in your, in your social media uh, feed. Um, and then you can choose, so this is going to go out on the 21st of February. You can say, um, still not on our mailing list, or um, click here to read and join. And then they're going to open up that your email and read it. Or in the case of the event, um, you know, a few spots left for this upcoming event. Or, um, you know, get in on this promotion while it lasts kind of thing, right? We can set the time again, say this time we want to set it to first thing in the morning for those people who read their emails in bed. Uh, let's set it for 7 a.m., say, and um, we'll see how that per performs. So, like I said, you can add multiple posts there, and I really like that because it saves you from having to go over to social media and manually create posts that include a link to your uh, email uh, Email, your latest email campaign. So you can click schedule there. Um, I'm not going to send those, but uh, once you schedule them, they'll they'll be queued up in your in the scheduler in Constant Contact, and they'll send when you've when you've set them to send. So if we go over 
do uh, reporting, this is where we'll see um, stats on our latest campaigns. So first and foremost, and because this is a demo account, I don't have a lot of uh, stats here to show you. Um, I'm just waiting for that campaign to be sent and show up in my in my email, and then I'll click on it, and and then we've got that to refer to, um, which will be helpful. Watch for it to come through here and click on it, so that we get some stats from that latest campaign I sent out. Um, so what you're going to see is the stats from your latest uh, email campaign, um, um, and uh, sorry, you'll see an overview of uh, on a your averages for all of your campaigns. What I like here is that it shows you, it goes by device, so it'll show you um, how many opened your campaign on mobile versus how many opened on desktop, so you can get a feel for where people are reading your email, they're reading them on the fly versus from the desktop. And I mean, there's some, some really, um, I, I, it's, it's a great thing regardless, but I think one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that your content needs to be um, set up differently depending on how many are opening on desktop and how many are opening on mobile. On, when, when people are looking at content from their desktop, they're more apt to take a little bit of time to read through things. But when people are looking at things on their mobile device, it, you know, mobile, mobile viewing is all about you know, quick information and they just want to get the information that they want and then they want to move on kind of thing. So if you're seeing a lot of mobile opens on your, uh, on your stats, think about keeping your, and this is something I, rec I recommend to everybody anyway, Keep your uh, email content really brief and then link to more information, whether it's on your blog or your e-commerce site or over on uh, one of your social media pages or what have you, um, or it links to, you know, if you've published a book or what have you or just to your, your plain website. Um, but keep the email, uh, the content, the text content short uh, so that they don't get reader fatigue, which happens uh, pretty quickly with uh, today's readers and today's mobile viewers. Um, allow them to click on a call to action that, like I said, takes them to more information. Not only does that help them avoid that reader fatigue and bounce away from your email before they're done reading it, but it also allows you to measure who's engaging with your content because if somebody's reading that first paragraph or couple sentences and they want more information, they're gonna click on that link and you're gonna see who clicked on that link and when, so you know who's interested in that content and how many and what time of day they're engaging with it. So that helps your stats as well. It helps you uh, get more information about uh, you know, your marketing and what's working and what's not. So uh, that's another compelling reason to keep your content uh, short and to the point. So um, I'm just going to open the email from my phone um, that uh, that was just sent through, and I'm going to leave it open here. So now I want to refresh this page. And I'm just going to scroll down and see if it's made note of that yet. There might be a bit of a a bit of a delay. Um, so a couple of those emails bounced, and the reason for that is that I put in like a, a Jerry Seinfeld or a Barney Rubble, or you know, I just made up some emails in there. So I wanted to show you there's there's bounce emails too that bounce back automatically and are undeliverable. So they'll show you why they're not being delivered. You know, per Captain Caveman, uh, I guess that email doesn't exist. What? Who knew, right? Um, but for Mick Jagger, apparently they've tried to send. We've tried to send Mick uh, a couple emails and. Um, after trying several times with a few different uh, campaigns of mine, because I've tried to email Mick at rollingstones.com before, um, it's now suspending that email address because it's not a good email address. So this is something you want to pay attention to to clean out your email list. Um, pay attention to these. There might be typos in here that are keeping your emails from being uh, delivered. And so you can go into any one of these and edit it um, so that maybe you see it's uh, harry at clubwielder.com and you're like, oh, wait, he did a play on words. It's actually Harry with uh, two R's here, not 
um, an A R Y. So his name is actually his real name is actually Harry. So we put that in there, and then what it's going to do is take that off of your your list. It's going to get rid of that, and then it'll try. So for the next campaign you send out, it'll add Captain Caveman back in there and send an email to him. Um, one of my favorite cartoons growing up, by the way. I loved Hanna Barbera. <laughs> Sorry for the reference, but um, so. If we go back to our reporting here for this particular email, we're seeing that 12 emails were sent. One was open. So let's we can click on this to see who uh, who opened the email and when. So it was Jane Nichols, which is actually one of my pseudonyms <laughs> that I've used for these purposes. Um, and you can see that Jane opened this at 12.53 p.m. today. So you can see when she's engaging with that. Now, if I go a step further and click on a link, um, we'll see if that, if I refresh, it's going to show me who clicked on links as well, which is important because this, opens are great. You want to see who's opening your email, but what you're really after is engagement, and that means um, that they're doing what you're asking them to do in the email, that they're engaging, they're, they're taking the necessary actions, so they're clicking to find out more information about what it is you're talking about, to go to your website, to go to your social media, to go to your event registration page, uh, all of that great information. So if we go back here, I've clicked on, um, it, it's showing now that there's one click. So Jane clicked on one thing, and if you go over to uh, the reporting, you'll see there's one unique click. Unique clicks means um, that it's uh, these are uh, individuals that are on your mailing list. So if somebody clicked on uh, a number of, uh, or a link a number of times, they're not going to count all of those clicks. They're, they're going to count unique clicks. So we're seeing that somebody clicked on Facebook, the Facebook, my Facebook business page. And so that tells me that this person is interested in connecting with me on Facebook, potentially. And then this person is, again, it's Jane, ne uh, Jane Nichols. And it tells me when she clicked on that link. So very helpful information, pretty, pretty basic information, but very helpful in allowing you to constantly improve your marketing efforts and uh, the information that you're putting out there, choosing, like I said, the right day of the week, the right time of day, and the knowing what content is resonating with people and what stuff is kind of falling flat. So um, some, some good information can be gleaned from just going to your reporting area. Uh, something else I just want to show you quickly as we're uh, nearing the 1 o'clock point here, 1 o'clock Eastern, is your list growth tools. Uh, so uh, by default, you've got a sign-up form and an update profile form. So for anybody who wants to update their profile, um, to update their email address, or to um, to uh, change their name uh, and or change their email preferences. If you have multiple lists that they can subscribe to, they can do all of that from their update profile form. So you can go in and, and uh, customize that and add that to the bottom of every email campaign as well as add that to your website in your if you have a newsletter area or if you have a button that asks people to subscribe. Um, you can you can do it from there as well. Your sign up form uh, is is here by default, and you can it, it won't be used until you put it into action. But you can link to your sign up form from a number of places, and I'll show you my sign up form. I've actually secured a custom uh, URL, so it's easy to get to. But my sign up form is at emotivate.tips because eTips is the name of my newsletter, and I send out um, links about email marketing, about social media, website design, and SEO, as well as upcoming events where I'm speaking either live at a seminar or via webinar like today's event. I'm also building an online course called a, a Website Fitness Challenge, so currently people can subscribe to learn more about that as well. So this is what the, the sign-up form looks like. We can customize it, add your logo, etc. It's pretty, it's nice and clean and simple, but it, uh, you know, you can use this text here to uh, allow people to understand why they might want to sign up for your your email. So um, uh, use that sign up form, and then what you can do is from uh, an email, from your email signature, 
from your Facebook page. Um, there's a number of places where you can ask people to sign up, and all you do is add that link there so they can click on a button and it takes them to your subscription form. Speaking of Facebook, uh, there's a beautiful, a beautiful uh, option here that allows you to add a Facebook sign-up form directly into your business page so that people can go to um, the Join My List tab and it will, and I'll just show you mine um, quickly here so that you understand how that works, but they can go to your Join My Mailing List tab and not be taken away from uh, Facebook. And uh, that it cuts down on the number of steps that they need to take in order to sign up for your list. And we're all by default kind of lazy, so you know this is a, this is a nice feature if somebody's on your Facebook page that you can capture them as, a, as an email subscriber as well. So you'll see here I've added a little call to action on my banner image, and it says get business marketing tips delivered to your inbox, and if they click sign up here, it will take them over to, now because I'm the admin on this page, it's not going to pull it up properly, sorry about that, but um, it will actually bring up just a form where people can sign up right from Facebook. So uh, other options as well. Um, you can create additional sign-up forms that are specific to um, particular lists or specific to, you know, if you want a different sign-up form on, on LinkedIn, for example, um, then you can create additional ones there. You can also create automated um, series of emails, which is really nice, so that as soon as somebody subscribes to your list, you can uh, start sending them without having to touch a thing because you've already queued it up. You can start sending every new subscriber a new email every seven days or, or what have you uh, to keep them engaged and you know that they're being taken care of until you send out your own campaigns um, you know, later that month or what have you. So that is a quick demonstration of the of constant contacts capabilities. Um, the, the thing that I love about this um, this brand is that, uh, about this business or this company is that um, they want to empower you with the tools that you need to market your business. They believe that every business owner can be a marketer and in fact that today's economy is, a, is what's called a subscription economy and it's very hands-on for business owners, but it can be overwhelming. So having the right tools in your toolbox really helps you cut down on the amount of time it takes to successfully market your business. So uh, what now? So one, if you're not currently using Constant Contact, you can sign up for a free 60-day trial at marketingforreal.com. Uh, please, if you want to take advantage of uh, potentially down the road of that free email template, or if you want to um, uh, you know, tap me for any uh, information in the future, this is the, the URL you want to use to set up your trial account. Um, of course, you want to upload your contacts, which you can do in a trial account as well as a, a, a full um, existing account if you have one. And then finally, you want to send an email. So try it out. See how it works. Test it on yourself, on your husband. I know my husband's one of my guinea pigs, so uh, you know, uh, use those email addresses. And uh, before we head into the Q&A uh, period, I know we're at 102 right now, so apologies for running just a little bit over here. Um, if you want to get started with Constant Contact, take advantage of the trial offer uh, with the 60-day trial. If you're ready to get started, go to uh, Marketing for Real and you can sign up uh, for, your, for your full account and get the free template design. Uh, prices start at $20 a month, and that is if you're paying month to month. If you are going to pay for six months or 12 months, you can get up to, if you're paying for 12 months, you can get up to 15% off uh, of, your, of your fees. Uh, if you're a chamber member, you can get up to 25% off. If you're a not-for-profit, you can get up to 30% off on an ongoing basis. Now we think about the things that we spend that kind of money on on a monthly basis and all of a sudden it doesn't seem like a lot of money uh, between coffees, etc. But even think about boosting posts on Facebook. Um, it only takes a couple boosted posts really to equal, uh, equal that amount too. So, and this is giving you direct, consistent, ongoing access to your audience, which I really love about Constant Contact. If you're already a Constant Contact user, and I know some of you on the call are today, then, um, uh, sorry, was that? Oh, I thought I put the slide in here. For those of you who are existing Constant Contact users, I offer a complimentary review of your um, 
of your account just to make sure that you are using, uh, that you're fully mobile responsive, for one, that you're fully integrated with social media, uh, that you are uh, anti-spam legislation compliant with either CASEL in Canada or CAN-SPAM in the United States, and finally, to identify any cost savings opportunities for you to make sure that you're taking uh, advantage of any discounts or promotions that are available for you right now. So if you're interested in that, please email me. Uh, my email is uh, at the bottom of this, and I'll be following up with you after this, so you'll, you'll be able to just respond to that, um, that email when I send you the recording uh, of this. If you're not sure where you're at with your marketing and what your next step should be, this is a nice little uh, quiz that Constant Contact has put together. Uh, go to constantcontact.com slash show dash your dash resolve. And regardless of where you're at, um, what level you're at, beginner, advanced, or anywhere in between, um, you can plug in some answers to their little quiz, and they're going to tell you what your next step should be, which is kind of a cool little quiz. There's the slide that I put in the wrong place. So if you're, uh, if you're already using Constant Contact and want a complimentary account review, I might be able to help you out there if you're not currently working with another authorized local expert. Um, and I'd like to open it up to questions now. So if you have questions, please, um, please enter them in the question area. And I'm going to uh, expand this area so I can take a look at uh, any questions that are coming in. And thank you, first of all, just for, for joining me today. I'm glad that you were able to take the time out uh, to um, to learn how to use uh, email marketing either for the first time or to use it a bit better for your business. So Cecilia has a question. If you wanted to edit the HTML, is that possible in the new editor? I will tell you something, Cecilia. Uh, you're obviously a bit more advanced editor like myself. And uh, it's one of, the, one of the things that they're working on adding to the new editor. So if you're currently using the second generation editor and you like having access to the HTML code, then continue to use that editor for as long as they'll allow you to um, because they are working on get, giving access to HTML code uh, for those who want a little more control over their design, the style sheet and, and the HTML, et cetera. Uh, so that is coming. I, I hope that answers your question. I'm sorry, it's probably not the answer that you wanted. Trust me, I am there with you, and uh, they've heard us, uh, the authorized local experts, loud and clear for those of us who are in the design business and really want control over, over what we're putting together. But for those who really like a simple, the, the simple functionality that creates a really nice looking email template, this new drag and drop editor is perfect for you. Uh, Derek is asking, thanks for your question, Derek. Uh, if I input a contact and accidentally duplicate an existing contact in the database, will it alert me or delete the duplicate? Actually, uh, what it will do when you're entering the contact information, or at least this has been my experience, Derek, is that it will actually say, it will stop you in the middle of, you know, if you're adding in, say, if I wanted to add Derek French to my contact database, once I type in Derek French, it's actually going to open up a pop-up window that says, you already have a contact in your database, Derek French, uh, and then it will give you the option, is this the same contact? Yes, um, let's, let's edit that existing contact within your database, or uh, if it's a different contact, click no, and continue adding contact as, per, uh, as you were. Does that, does that help you? I, I, I'm assuming that's what you meant by that. So hopefully that answers your question, Derek. But yes, it does, it does have a nice feature in there that allows you to, it, it catches uh, any duplicates that you might be uh, in the middle of creating. It doesn't even wait until you're finished. So I like that. It's quite intuitive that way. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other great questions like that? I love those little uh, feature questions because there's, it, it really is quite feature rich for anybody who um, is currently using Constant Contact. And, and something that I, I get a lot of after I do these webinars is, uh, existing Constant Contact customers saying to me, oh my gosh, I learned so much, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. Uh, and honestly, like I said, I mean, I'm still reaching out to the user community and to existing, or to the uh, 
uh, customer support uh, for answers to some of my questions because there's one one is they're always evolving and, and improving the platform and the other is that there's it, there's just a lot there that you can take advantage of a lot of great features so you know I'm always continuing to build on um, to build on the, the skill sets and the, the features that I currently use so any other questions? I am going to hang around here for another 20 minutes. So I know some people had to uh, jump off of the call. And um, so uh, you know everybody will be getting um, access to the recorded webinar, including all of the questions that we're covering off right now. Um, but, uh, but please feel, feel free to ask away uh, or to stay on the line if anything occurs to you. Because I'm, I'm, I want to use this time. I, I find this is the time that people get the most value out of is when you can ask business specific or or usage specific questions about the platform. So if anybody's still on the line and um, is an existing constant contact user, is there anything new that you learned today or any questions that you had that you were hoping to get answered but you haven't gotten answered yet? Or do you have any questions about the new 3G editor, ver 3GE editor versus the, um, maybe if you're still using the second generation editor, um, any questions about uh, how to you know, transition over to the new one? Or specific questions that you might have. Please feel free to ask away. I'm just here in the background. If you have any questions, I'll be online until 12.30, and then uh, we'll wrap up, and, and I'll get this recording ready to send out to all of you. Hey, Barbara. Um, Barbara has a question here. Do all these tips and tools apply to not-for-profits? Um, not sure specifically what you're asking. Uh, everything that um, that I showed you today uh, applies to not-for-profits. If you're talking about restrictions around emailing, uh, then there the require or the the allowances are a little bit um, different for not-for-profits. Is that what you mean, Barbara? Around um, permission and what's considered spam, etc. And if not that, what specifically are you are you asking about? So uh, you said yes. That I guess that means um, around uh, getting permission. So. Um, not for profits, and, and Barbara, I'll, I'll send you um, uh, some information specifically around uh, any spam legislation and how it applies to not for profits, so that you can take a look at it. Um, there are, uh, it's a little bit of a gray area for not for profits um, about you know who they can email and when. Basically, if anybody's volunteered for you. Um, or if they're a donor or uh, a member of the community uh, that's that's relevant to your cause, then um, you know you're 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 better able to engage with those people through email and um, the CRTC in Canada. That's who that's who uh, governs this, who who enforces this. 
um, ha is much more lenient for with not for profits on um, on the whole issue of, of getting permission and and um, you know what what classifies what's classified as spam, but in order to satisfy your answer entirely, I think what I'll do is I'll send you a link to a really great resource that explains um, what is and isn't and, and how the law applies to not-for-profits. Did that, did that answer your question? I'm, I'm hoping that this document will, will better lay out because I'm, I'm talking about CASEL from a marketing perspective and uh, you know you might want a bit more uh, legalese than I can offer. Um, I tend to always go by marketing best practices and, and the golden rule, which is do unto others, right? So I don't want people adding me to their list if I haven't given them permission. So I have to make sure that I'm paying the same courtesy to other people. Um, that's just general best practice. But um, but when it comes to email marketing with not-for-profits, um, they're, they're, like I said, there's some uh, Additional, they're they're much more lenient uh, about uh, spam. So uh, I'll send you some information uh, specifically that that speaks specifically to that. And like I said, uh, more of a legal perspective on it than a marketing perspective. You're welcome. And thank you for asking your question. There's a lot of conversation around. Uh, around anti-spam legislation, especially for those of you who are in Canada um, with the release of, of uh, the new CASEL, uh, which is Canada's anti-spam legislation. So the new CASEL uh, legislation, which was released uh, July of 2014, we're actually coming up to the end of a three-year transitional period where they're giving us this time, the CRTC is giving us this time to get our list in order and ensure that we have permission from our subscribers. Um, anybody that we don't, from whom we don't have permission, we have two years to either get permission from them or uh, after that point if we don't, we, we have to our list if we haven't engaged with them again during the Thanks for joining us today, Karen. Glad you could uh, glad you could join us.